I retired in 05 as a produ uh, production worker at the age of 57 after 33 years of service. That was before the Delphi bankruptcy and because of union contracts that generations before me had fought for, the idea was this. I had worked 30 Sorry. years, I had a decent pension, I should leave, and in my place should come a younger worker who would also have a decent paying job and security after working their 30 years of service. But what happened? A worker that now comes to work in an auto plant, they are going to make less than half of what I make. They will not have a pension. Their health care is vastly inferior. This is not what I plan for the next generation. I have a son who works in the auto industry, and he is threatened by what's going on today. We have a Congress before us that will be shortly, some of them, leaving office. They must not be petty and think solely in terms of, yes, let's get the unions. Because that, let's be honest, appears to be what's going on. We're talking about manufacturing in the United States. We're not talking about saving one particular corporation over another. We're talking about an industry. We're talking about the heartland of America. Are we going to just let this disappear? And please, people, our Congress is going out of office shortly. You're going to make the decision to let this happen. You're not even going to let those newly elected take over and do anything. Now, we don't think it is a solution that's going to happen overnight. It's not going to change this loan they get, you know, them through the end of the year. And that's why we're here. Because we've been talking about it, we've been thinking about it, and we have some ideas which we're presenting you here today. And we think the auto worker, the supposed $70 an hour, give me a break, lie. And I hope people understand that what they did is when the industry was much larger and, like it's been said, a hundred years old, GM, had many more retirees. They took our wages and benefits and put that into the wage of a, a limited number of hourly workers today and called that their wage, $70. Give me a break. My wage when I retired, whatever, 28 The ones coming in, less than half that. So let's get the facts straight, and I appreciate the members of the press here today, please. Don't mislead me, people. We're here to present a human face. We are auto workers. We are people. Now, ideas of the way forward. We say this. Let's talk about an auto transportation energy industry. And the government can do this. That is, if they feel that this industry is not being properly run, then they should give oversight, they should give direction about the way forward because we're talking about transportation and clearly the government must have something to say about this. Don't close the factories and lay the workers off. If there's work out there that can be done and we have some suggestions, mass transportation must be uh, expanded. Remember World War II? You know your history? Auto plants transformed into making airplanes and other war products overnight. Why can't we do this again? It's another crisis. Let's start making mass transportation. Let's start doing light rail, speed trains. We can do that work. We're skilled workers. We've shown that we've got the capabilities. Let us do that work. Alternative energy. Wind turbines is another suggestion. Blades for windmills. Let's change these factories over and let's do this work that needs to be done. We are not here just to speak for ourselves. We are, to, we are here to speak for all working people and all communities. Don't take away from us even more that we have already lost 
but expand it to everyone. It's been shown union play, workplaces have better wages. And it's been spoken here about how we need to make it easier for people to go into unions. It's been, uh, there's been um, surveys that have shown that the majority of American working people want to be in unions. They're not in unions. Why? Perhaps the process is not a fair process. Change the process. That's what we're saying. So we want to say that we as auto workers embrace the idea of accountability. Yes, the government must demand accountability. But we, the people, we're the ones making the investment. Just like in our history, no taxation without representation. Well, we're saying no investment without representation. The people have a right to say how their money is invested, and the government has the obligation of carrying that out for the people. And we're here to speak, to let the people's voice be heard. Thank you.